Welcome into Road to the Draft presented by Raymond James. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. This is where we break down all the new developments in free agency, in draft news, and everything that could impact what the Buccaneers are going to do in this year's draft. So since our last one of these, we have now been able to say that the Buccaneers are bringing back all 22 of their starters from the Super Bowl roster, which is so exciting. And I wanted to hear from you how that changes the conversation around best player available versus need in this year's draft. Yeah, we've been on we've been on this road to the draft for quite a while now, haven't we? We're only three weeks away. And back in February, uh, Jason Light said, if we can get the core this core back, if we can get most of these guys back, uh, then we'll go into the draft truly being able to pick best player available. Even more, you say that every year, but he really meant it this year. And that's where we are now. He managed to, and him and his crew got virtually everybody back, all 22 starters from the Super Bowl team. So uh, that means you can go best player available. With that in mind, I think the new thing here is it makes sense to look at what are the deepest positions in the draft? Because if you need somebody that's going to get to 32 in the first round, it, it could be at a position where there's a lot of quality prospects that, you know, the fifth or sixth guy in some years would be first rounders or middle of the first rounders. And now they could make it to the end. And to me, those, those deep positions uh, include offensive tackle, interior defensive linemen and cornerbacks. So, you know, you could end up a guy like uh, North, North Dakota state's Dylan Radins might've been might be a guy that you can get at the end of the second round or Alan McNeil from North Carolina State, an interior defensive lineman, if guys like Christian Barmore and Levi Onzaruki are already gone. And the Buccaneers could go for depth at cornerback, even if that isn't necessarily a big need. And there are five guys that are showing up in pretty much every first round before the last pick. But then you have a couple other guys that could be lingering around the top of the second round, like uh, Asante Samuel Jr. from Florida State and Tyson Campbell from Georgia. So take a look at the deep positions, and that might lead you to where the Buccaneers have the best chance of taking a player. Yeah, and when you don't have the glaring needs, not only does it let you focus on the best player available, but it also can let you look down the road a little bit, maybe at some guys that need to be developed more. And it seems like that's what Jason Light mentioned in his recent comments, that they might be focusing on some of these developmental guys. That's, a, that's exactly what he said. And he said that when they're evaluating guys, and if they have five or six guys that they like as their pick is coming up, what they're going to focus on is which of these players is going to be the best player two years from now. And that could be at any position. So you look at guys that um, for one reason or another might not be hugely productive when they first start in the rookie season. I mentioned one of those guys in our mock draft because I picked him for the Buccaneers, Jason Owe, an edge rusher from Penn State who didn't have any sacks last year, but had incredible numbers at his pro day and is a really talented guy. Uh, but it's not just on the edge. You know, there's another edge rusher, Ronnie Perkins from Oklahoma, who could use a little time to develop. So the Buccaneers will have some options there, but they could also look at a guy like Walker Little, the tackle from Stanford, who if you asked um, draft analysts two years ago, might have been a top 10 pick, maybe the first tackle on the board, but then he uh, suffered an injury in the first game of 2019, and then he opted out last year. So this is a talented guy that basically hasn't played in two seasons. So that's pretty much the definition of a developmental guy. And then again, a cornerback, even if you get through the depth of, of them, of the guys we were talking about, like Asante Samuel, you could be looking in the second or third round at a guy like Allen Robinson from near, nearby UCF. And I know Bucks fans, when they're hearing developmental and guy that you might need a couple years from now, that maybe quarterback is one of those positions that might come to mind. Do you see that being one of those developmental guys or positions that they look at this year? Yeah, I purposely didn't mention any quarterbacks in that last segment because I think people automatically think of quarterback when you start saying developmental pick. Uh, but yeah, it's something that Jason Light and, and Bruce Arians have talked about wanting to do. Um, the Buccaneers could take a quarterback with the 32nd pick, but I kind of think it's far more likely that it, we're talking about a, a second or a third or a fourth round pick. And now you're looking at guys like Davis Mills of Stanford, who isn't high on a lot of draft boards, but he's a very successful quarterback for Stanford and has a lot of tools. Um, Kellen Mond of Texas A&M, I'm sure Mike Evans would like that pick. So those are guys that could be in the middle of the draft. And then if you get down to the end in the sixth and seventh round, and you're really talking about a developmental guy, um, Peyton Ramsey of Northwestern is worth looking at. He's got some tools as well, uh, was a good leader at Northwestern and really helped them uh, win a lot of games last year. All right. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Road to the Draft presented by Raymond James. Thanks for being with us. We still have a couple more of these before the draft. We are finally getting close. So hopefully every week we have a better idea of what could be there at 32 and some of those later rounds for the Buccaneers. We'll see you next time.